The remnants of Hurricane Irene, now a tropical storm, have been pushing north from New York into New England, and we now have Wyatt Andrews in Mystic, Connecticut. Wyatt? Scott, I'm in Mystic, Connecticut, which is about 120 miles east of New York City, and we're in some of the heaviest winds that we've faced so far. Most of the low-lying areas of southern Connecticut that we toured this morning were one to two feet underwater. You might not be able to tell, but the boats floating in this harbor, many of them anyway, are riding two to three feet above the level of their docks and piers. And this is not because of Irene's rains. This is Irene's storm surge. The leading edge of Irene struck here early this morning with gale force and tropical storm winds. Those are not unusual for New England, but the timing of Irene's impact was unusual. This is the storm surge that struck southern New England. It was six to nine feet from southwestern Connecticut to the eastern tip of Massachusetts, and it came ashore right at high tide. Fear of that nine-foot surge led the U.S. Navy on Friday to send all four nuclear-powered submarines from their home port of Groton, Connecticut, out to the safety of deep water. All low-lying areas of Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts are under mandatory evacuation orders, but we noticed many people riding it out, and most of the people we spoke to said they were used to gales and to the floods and are taking Irene in stride. So far, there has been one fatality in Connecticut, none in the rest of New England, but two dangers remain. While damages to boats and property on the front side of the storm will be significant, it's the back side of the storm that's now more worrisome. That backside could bring six to ten inches of rain to places like western Connecticut, western Massachusetts, and Vermont. And the governors here in New England are warning there could be heavy flooding yet to come, noting that historically that backside flooding has been more deadly to New Englanders than any frontside to any storm. Scott? Wyatt, I have to ask, you said if the docks, oh, you said that the docks are underwater, well then where are you standing? Right. Scott, the crew was smart enough to put me on a floating dock. And, and, and historically, that's interesting because 20 years ago when Hurricane Bob beached hundreds of New England commercial fishing boats, many of the harbors here switched to floating docks. And they work. Thank you very much, Wyatt Andrews in Mystic, Connecticut.